Okay. Two days later. Lomas. Late. We got Lomas Brown, the legendary offense. No! Sugar! <laughs> Sugar! Sugar! <laughs> Lo Man, I, I, so McNuggets, our producer, said, hey, we need somebody Monday. Uh, reach out to someone. I go, okay. Uh, What's the Browns' biggest problem right now? I thought offensive line play. Who do I go to? Lomas. Lomas, you come on? <laughs> hey, Sugar, I'm in. Yeah. No show. Uh, Lomo. I Hey, I had a senior moment, man. It's hell getting old, Jay. Hey, hey, I hey, hit the hey Lomas, point. I got I know. Lomas, I got you. You my baddest boy right now. You dry snitching on TV, Jay. Yeah. Don't dry, dry snitching. snitching. He's dry snitching. You <laughs> tell him. Wait, wait, wait. I'm second. not dry snitching. You really I'm a full on. Hold on a second. He was Lomas. on the stand. I saw him miss. Lomas is getting for you out of the quarter long. Lomas him right there. Lomas, you got to help Jay out here. Help because me out, brother. He has <laughs> lost his mind, Lomas. Help me out, Lo. He, he just said on this show that Brock Purdy, who we all like and think is a good player, is better than Josh Allen. How crazy is he? Kill me, bro. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Sugar. Come Sugar. at me. You didn't go there. I went you there. You didn't go there, did you, Sugar? And you know what, Lomas? It's going to be proven out. I'm telling you, so, it's going to be proven out. So, now, I would say this. I would say that I think Josh Allen is a little bit more turnover prone Whoa, than no question. Purdy has what been. What gets you beat in big games, Lomas? You know yeah, this. That, that, you're right. You're right. And he you got to take chances, care of the rock, Jay. man. Yeah. He has this gunslinger mentality, and he takes chances that a lot of other quarterbacks, a lot of more reserved quarterbacks don't do. And when you do that, you put the ball in harm's way. But, man, I love Josh Allen. I love what he could bring to I the table. Lomas, I do, too. That rocket on and them legs, Jay. He could use them legs I, to get listen, out of trouble. I, Jay's I out of his mind. That. He's lost, you I get lost all your mind. That. But <laughs> you got a guy going back to the time he became a starter, 11 games. So all of the starters in the league going back there 11 games, He's first in the NFL in fewest interceptions, and he's second in the NFL in most touchdowns. He's not That's asked to do I judge my nearly as much as Josh Allen. That's he's how not I judge him. Right, Lomas? Yeah. He's not asked to do nearly as much as Josh Allen is. You're, you're Lomas, right. I mean, in the structure, in the, in the San Francisco structure, man, they have a great structure. I mean, look at some of the other quarterbacks that they've had in that system. And they've had success with it. And, you know, not to take anything away from Brock Purdy, he's a good quarterback. You got to be good to be in the NFL. But, man, I think Josh Allen is a special quarterback. He's yeah, a little he special. Is, he is. And listen, I. By the way, 17, 17 touchdowns and four picks so he, in the playoffs. Who? 17 touchdowns Josh and four Allen? picks. Yes. A lot of those were the first round and second round playoff opponents, but when he gets in the struggle with a Kansas City or a Cincinnati, so you, while you're scurrying through to find your stats, I'm just telling you what my eyes tell me. <laughs> Again, he yeah. has thrown bad picks. Well, your eyes are wrong. Big moments against Kansas City, he has six <laughs> touchdowns and one pick in the playoffs. What when the game they lost last year? What was his numbers against the Bengals? Yeah, what were his numbers? He did not play well in that well, game. What were his numbers? That's what I want to know. <laughs> one game, Jay. It was a big game. It's the only bad game he's played in the playoffs. What were his numbers? He was he completed sixty percent of his passes. 264 yards, no touchdown, one pick. Okay. Thank you. That's can't the that. only can't bad game. Can't have it. Lomas, we were Wait, no, 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 Jay. <laughs> you're wrong. No, admit you're wrong. I've you're never, wrong. Never. You're wrong. Admit it. Same. You're wrong. He's played eight playoff games. He's had one bull, bad one. Bull. You're wrong. Time will tell. Time no, will tell. You said he's not. He doesn't Time do it big. He's had one bad game right in the playoffs. Right now, he's playing better game. than Josh Allen this season. Who you, and you, so, and you and want nobody, me to say that I'm wrong? And, you said he's been bad in the playoffs. We have he a had guess. one bad game. Let's, let's okay. behave appropriately. <laughs> well, Lomas, we okay. brought you on to talk about the Browns offensive line, believe it or not. Right. Uh, and I know that you do the Lions games, and I know you're busy on Sunday. You can't see everything. I understand that. We, mm -hmm. did, we did make nuggets. We sent him some clips, right? I did send him and clips. I've okay. seen the clips. Okay, so here's what I – before yes. we say anything about Browns offensive line play or whatever, I want to hear what your – impression is of the line from the clips we sent you things that you may have seen that you can point out so willis is the one that i really really watch jed wills uh, yes and, yeah yes and you know jay it he's not a bad player oh, it's okay. just 
his technique right now. He he's all over the place with his technique. And what he's all over the place with, uh, Jay, the most important thing is his eyes. Right now, he's seeing everything. And when you're seeing everything as an offensive lineman, that means any little fake that the defensive lineman does to you, you're watching that. and you Because you can see his helmet going like this when guys are throwing fakes on him. He has to stop looking at the total picture, and he has to find something small the zero his eyes in on on his opponent, and that's going to help him. He's just trying to see too much right now, Jay, and you can't do that. As an offensive lineman, you just can't do that. You have to zero your eyes in, like I say, on the small target, and that's going to help you with the overall target. But right now, he's just seeing everything, and that's going to get you beat because, like I said, anytime a D lineman throws a move on you or do anything, you're looking at that, and you're kind of going to go for that and everything. So, Makes not sense. a bad player. He has good feet. He's got good feet. You know, he's quick, but he's watching everything right now. Interesting. Shout out, Lomas, first of all, shout out. I met you at the uh, high school Hall of Fame. Congratulations on your yep, induction. Yep. Um, and yeah. um, but I w- really wanted to, to ask is. You know, sometimes from from your perspective of, of an offensive lineman, how, what, what what effect does it have if if the coach moves away from the running game too quickly, especially if you got a rookie quarterback? Um, can you talk hey. about how how establishing the run? And sometimes you're not gonna have uh, uh, eight yards or ten yards, but just establishing the run kind of slows down the pass rush. What are your thoughts on that? That that's a great point, and I I'll kind of demonstrate it to you okay like we always say pass blocking is a passive movement meaning you're going backwards and you're trying to block a guy that's coming at you that's a passive movement run blocking you going at a guy you're attacking this guy so that's an aggressive movement so to me like i say anytime you can run the ball and run it successfully, it's going to help your offensive alignment because one, it's going to be, put them in the mentality of we're attacking. We're going after these guys. Two, like I say, it's going to help you with run blocking. If you mess up a little bit in your technique, you can still overcome it and, and, and play, you know, and have a decent run block on that particular play. If you don't do the correct things when you're pass blocking, you're going to get beat. It's hard to recover. Some guys can, but it's very, very hard to recover if you don't have the proper sets when you're pass blocking. So to me, run blocking, I I hate to use the word easy when you talk about anything in the NFL, but run blocking is easier for offensive linemen than the pass blocking. That's almost like the last thing to come, especially when you get to this level, the pro level. That's the hardest thing to learn how to do. So if they can run the ball a lot more, it would definitely not only help him, but it will help the rest of that offensive line too. Lo, when you look at, you know, at the tackle position, we had a lot of guys that came out. The Browns have drafted guys that play right tackle, and they're trying to transition them to left tackle. How hard is that, and what do what is the qualities that you must have to be able to be successful to make that transition? Yeah, that's tough. I mean, I did it in the Pro Bowl, you know, playing left tackle. But in the Pro Bowl, you have to swing and do it. And it's hard. I'm telling you, man, it's hard, especially if you're used to playing on one side and then they're flipping you to another side. Like you say, these guys right tackle position, you don't see the best pass rushers on the right side like you see on the left side. Now you have some guys that are flipped now, some defensive ends that flip and go over both tackles. But for the majority of it, your best uh, defensive lineman is over your left tackle. So it's a whole different challenge than what you have. You're protecting the quarterback's blind side, which we know is the most important side to protect on the quarterback. And it's all about technique. It's more about technique on the left side than it is the right side. You got to have technique to play the right side too, but your technique is so important on that left side because of these natural pass rushers that you have to face 
um, each and every week over there on the left hand side. So it's a big adjustment trying to go from right to left. Um, I, I, a good example is Panay Sewell um, here in Detroit. He's had to flip and play both sides because of injuries. That was his natural side, the left side. So it's a little easier for him to flip to the left side coming from the right side. But if a guy hadn't played over there or he's been a right tackle most of his career and you're trying to move him to the left side, it's going to be an adjustment. It really is. By the way, Lomas, uh, the most important question here, uh, I got Amon Ross St. Brown and Jameer Gibbs on my fantasy team. <laughs> Can we get these guys back on the field this week or what? Are they going to play those two? I know, man. I know, I know uh, Jameer Gibbs. I know yep. he had a hamstring that kept him out mm. um, that he got during the week of practice. And, um, you know, so I think hopefully he's getting close to come back. And as we affectionately call Amon Ross St. Brown, we call him the sun god here. The <laughs> sun god, I think, I think he's going to be close wow. to getting back. He could have played. He yeah. could have played this game, but they just chose to rest him, which I thought was a good move. You know, I, we, we were talking about – while we were talking quarterbacks before, we were talking about Jared Goff, and it's fascinating – because when he was with the Rams, like they went to the Super Bowl and a lot of people felt like they got there in spite of him and then he struggled after that. I, 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 I've watched him a lot in Detroit, of course, because he's on my fantasy team. And I think he's played great since going to Detroit. You know, like borderline top 10, right on that edge of the top 10 quarterback. I mean, he seems really good right now. Are you a full believer <laughs> in Jared Goff? Hey, I call him the silent assassin. That's him, man. He don't say a lot. His attitude, his mood stays just the same. You can't tell whether we're winning or losing the game by looking at Jerry because, like I say, he just stays even keel all the time. But the guy's been playing phenomenal for us. He really has been. He's had an interception in these last three games, one in each game. But the thing about it, after each interception, he has bounced back and led a touchdown drive. And that's the thing that you like to see, how guys handle adversity, how guys bounce back from bad things happening to them. Jared has been awesome. I think he has earned a contract here. You know, like you said, he was kind of discarded from uh, L.A., you know, brought here. You know, people here in Detroit didn't know a lot about him. People were kind of standoffish. People took, called him a stopgap that he got here. And he could just continue to get better and better each and every year, each and every game. And now, if we lose Jared, our season is over with. That's how important he is yep. to the Detroit Lions in this organization. Yeah. Lomas, back to the Browns offensive line. Uh, and again, I know that you haven't seen every snap like we have. Um, but there's been some talk that Jed's just not the guy. Now, the team picked up his fifth-year option which is for next year. So he's due just shy of 15 million. It, it makes it almost impossible to, I know. I, know. <laughs> I, wow. I, I recognize that look. I know, we oh said the God. same thing. When they picked it up, Lomas, we were like, what <laughs> are they doing? Now, here's the, the reality of the situation is, that's where we are. He's gonna be here. Yeah. You know that Bill Callahan is the guru of offensive lines. Yes. You also know that left tackles don't fall out of clouds. So what do they do in this situation where they know they've got a guy that is, is maybe not performing poorly, but on certain plays, he's performing very poorly. How does that get fixed? Can that get fixed five weeks into the season? Well, Jay, I think by them investing the money in him, they figured that it could get fixed. There is no way they would have picked up that fifth-year option if they thought he was a guy that, that – that, he couldn't have success. A guy that Coach Callahan, which, like you said, he's one of the best ever to coach that position, that he couldn't uh, turn around. Quick quick, quick uh, comment, Jay. Um, the Brickershaw Ferguson, his oh, second yeah. year in the league. Yeah, the Jets called me in. That's when uh, Mangini, he was the head coach then. He called me in to work with the Brickershaw. And I remember before I, I worked with the Brickershaw, they called me in the office, him and the GM, and they were asking me, do you think this guy could play? 
we we're start we don't know we we have no idea if he could play or not and my question was yes he has all the athletic talent he has all the tools to be a very very good player in this league a lot of times jay it's here yeah it's here with right. a lot of those guys too you know what i'm saying so he's a young guy that you have to nurture you got the right coach to do it and i'm telling you jay just me looking at his feet looking at some of the past sets from what y'all sent me he has quick feet he has good enough feet to stay on the left hand side of the, the, the stay at left tackle. Right. So I think it could be fixed, Jay. I really do. I think they can fix him. And don't forget, an offensive line is, is the sum of all the parts. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Everybody got to be working like a hand in the glove for that play to work. If one guy not doing what he's supposed to be doing, that play is not going to work on the offensive side of the ball. So all of them are, are a sum of one. So they should be able to, I, I, I think, Jay, in my heart of hearts, I think they should be able to fix this young man. Well, I really do. That, I really hey, listen, hope. I think that's what we want to hear. Yeah. The one thing that's interesting, you said the hand and glove thing. Betonio has been an all, you know, a perennial pro bowler. Um, it's interesting that all of the guys on the line that have been pretty solid, all of their PFF grades, for whatever that's worth, it seems like everybody has taken a step back. And I'm going to get your thought on PFF grades in a second. But it seems like Thank all you. of their play is stepped back. And again, if a chain is as strong as its weakest link, it makes sense. Guys are having to switch over and help him with protections. And by proxy, they're weaker at their spot because of it. So it all makes that, perfect sense. What do you think of the PFF grades? Because we have man, discussed them Jay. ad nauseum on this show. So Jay, when did they become? When did they become the telltale of how guys are? When? Who in the world decided? Okay, PFF is going to be how guy get how guys get paid. How you grade a guy? How good a guy is? I'm trying to figure out who is PFF. Who who decided to make them kings of everything? Because every time you turn around. PFL says he's the number one tackle, or PFL says he's playing at this rate. I'm like, who the hell is PFL? Well, here's That's what's what interesting. I want to know. We had we had one of their guys on, uh, I think maybe last week or a couple weeks ago, and you know he said they've got you know 70 analysts or whatever. But here's my thing: if they if any of their people were truly great at what they're doing. They would be working for one of the 32 NFL. Thank you. I had a former Thank player that you. watched that segment that reached out to me and said, PFF is the only thing we have. Okay, so we stick our teeth into it. But he played in the league for 12 years. He said, our coaches used to mock it. Our coaches used to say, what are they watching? Because we're grading Thank these guys you. out at a much different level. I think there's some validity well, to it. But we can't. What use else it are we supposed Bible? to use as fans yeah, and media? Well, I mean, like, how for offensive can... linemen, what else are we There's supposed no other to well, 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 look, for me, I get upset at the J, our old show, e, our old network, ESPN. Mm -hmm. They get all like Orlovsky, and I know he's a former Lion. But this dude, he be on there trying to tell guys, yeah, if you're going to be a great quarterback, you got to do this, this, and this. Well, dude, you was never a great quarterback. How are you going to tell guys how to be a great quarterback? Man, that just kills me sometimes when I hear some of these guys on TV and these guys ain't never did anything in the league. How are you going to tell somebody how they're supposed to be a great quarterback when you were never a great quarterback? It just it yeah. puzzles me. So back to PFF, Jay, if it was players in there, if their analysts were former players, I think I can have a lot more respect for it than it being a bunch of writers or well, whatever I, I they think there are some former players. I think Orlovsky well, I hope so. I hope so. I think there are. I don't know. Oddly enough, yeah, I, think, I know right. Bruce, he is. Right. I know Bruce Gradkowski is. Okay, I was, you yeah, know what, Bruce to me, the two were the same yeah, guy, yeah, yeah. But, but you're right. Yeah, but I think Gradkowski. But I, I did have one more question, Ole Miss. I'm fascinated by this because – you know, we've had Joe Thomas on the show, obviously, another great left tackle like yourself. Yes. And Joe yes. talked about, like, when I talk, when, when we talk to Joe, it seems like, he, I don't know that he's ever actually said this, 
I don't think I've asked him this question. That's why I want to ask it to you. How important is the the film study, the knowing, okay, I'm going up against this guy this week and Reggie White, and I know he likes to do this and he likes to do that versus the actual practice on the field. How? What's more important? Like, how important? Because I feel like we as fans think, Oh, it's all about the practice on the field. But the film study and knowing the traits and tendencies of the guys you're going against, is that even more important? Yeah, I I think so. I think for me, I think it's everybody's preference. For me, like I couldn't learn on the board or in the film study. I had to take what they were telling me and I had to go outside and I had to practice it. For me to get it down, that's right. how I was. You have some guys that are visual learners. Me, I had to go out there and actually do it to learn. I think it's a combination. I think you have to have both. You have to definitely know guys' tendencies, know what they want to do. If he's lined up in a nine-wide technique, I know he's going to try to dip and rush me to the outside. When he get in this seven technique or this five technique on me, then I know he he got two ways he could beat me, either inside or he could rip me and beat me back to the outside. So I better take a slight inside step to protect my inside and force him to go outside because that's where I want him to go. So it's little things like that that you pick up on. I just found out recently uh, from talking to someone that talked to Richard Dent, and Dent, through his film study, when we used to play against each other, he knew when my head was down, he knew it was a run play coming at him. Yeah. And I, I, I swear to goodness, I wish somebody would have told me that. <laughs> my, my, my Lord. I was wondering why this dude was so hard to block in the run play, but he, he had that little tendency from watching film on me. He knew when I had my head down, it was basically going to be a That's run huge. play. So, yeah, a tell. Yeah, it's important. Like that. Hey, Lomas, yeah. we got to run. Yeah. Before we do, McNuggets wanted to know why you call me Sugar. Should, hey, this the, that's the sweetest man I've ever known right there. Look, like you say, man, you know how sweet sugar is and stuff, man. That How he dressed, how he carried himself. That man was pure sweetness right there. So I had to give him a nickname. And anything that goes with sweet is sugar. That's him. <laughs> Lomas, I can't tell you how great it is to see you again. And we'll talk to you. Thank you so much Ask for coming anytime. on. Anytime. Right. Anytime, Jay. Anytime. We, thank you, my brother. <laughs>